Hello, my name is Fox and you're watching Dead of Fools. Let's jump right in. Today we are looking at the balance data slate and points changes released by GW on the 20th of June. Games Workshop made some massive changes in anticipation of the new prior Nexus mission deck, which will see play roughly at the same time as this data slate and points update. We will look at all the adjustments, as well as giving our win rate for the factions since the last balance update. Unfortunately, GW have not given their win rates this time out, so we can't compare them against our own. We also have the new codices for the Sisters and Gene Stealers, which have been given their points in this update. I will highlight the new points, but as these are not really changed from the previous field manual, I will only cover them briefly. With that said, let's start with the core rule changes, then go through the factions alphabetically. There have been some significant changes to the core rules with the way certain strategies work. For the abilities which allowed you to use one for free, such as the Space Marine Captain's ability, it has now reduced the cost of the chapters by one. They are no longer restricted to battle tactics only, but they can't be used to get another use of the strategy in a single phase, unless that strategy is mentioned specifically. For example, the Hex March Destroyer specifically allows another use of Overwatch, so it would be able to use Overwatch, even if it had already been used, but a Space Marine Captain wouldn't by its right of battle ability. GW have also turned down the popular ability to increase the CP of one of your opponent's strategies by one. Now, any units within 12 inches of the model have all their strategies increased by one. I think this is nowhere near as powerful, as it will be rather difficult to keep your units within 12 inches. The Calidus Assassin was included specifically to increase the cost of one of your opponent's battle tactic stratagems all game long. The ability is still very useful. If you place your model within 12 inches, it will make the Calidus vulnerable, as it will be within low and operative. Finally, GW have increased the range of all stratagems, which make a unit untargetable. Previously, it was outside 12 inches, and now it will be outside 18 inches. This will take a lot of power out of these abilities, however, they will still be very good when they come up. The stratagem Tank Shot now works off the unit's toughness rather than the strength of its weapons. This makes sense for me, and it will work more as intended with high toughness tanks having a big impact, but units such as Commander Farsight no longer dealing loads of mortal wounds by using the strength of his Dawnblade for the stratagem. Other core stratagems were changed, such as the Command Point Reroll taking account of fast rolling, and grenades being unable to be used if you advanced or fell back. The Heroic Intervention Stratagem was also reduced to 1 CP cost, which is welcome considering it wasn't super popular before. The changes to movement are interesting. As per the Warhammer Community article, models now move in a series of straight lines, and round-based models can pivot as many times as they want for free. For non-round-based models, you pay 2 inch of their total movement, and you can pivot as many times as you would like. In the rather substantial rules commentary, GW have given multiple examples of the new movement rules. For models with round bases, the rules are a lot simpler, as you no longer have to worry about pivoting, and you can move your models in straight lines. You can move tanks in a straight line diagonally without paying the 2-inch movement to pivot. This essentially means your drivers have mastered the art of drifting a rhino tank. Very impressive indeed. These changes should prove very interesting, and could well have a big impact on the game. Many of the top players of 40k say the movement phase is the most important, as it is the one where you have the most control over it as it has the lowest amount of random chance involved. I'm sure top players will take advantage of these changes if they can, but I do think for round based models at least, moving and pivoting will be much simpler than before. We also have a whole host of minor rule changes which are outlined in the rule commentary document available on Warhammer Community. Perhaps the biggest change which I haven't already talked about is the changes to mortal wounds which are caused by devastating wounds and the hazardous ability. These mortal wounds no longer spill over to other models, which should make their weapon type far less punishing. It will still destroy armour, but an anti-tank shot will no longer take out whole squads of infantry. Mortal wounds caused in other ways will still spill over as it did before. Perhaps one of the other big changes is the fact indirect fire now always misses on an unmodified roll of a 1 to 3. GW have tried on multiple occasions to change this rule, perhaps they will finally be happy with the rule with this additional restriction. There are some additional changes, such as a clarification on out-of-phase rules such as Overwatch, not triggering other rules which would normally apply when a unit is shot, as it isn't the shooting phase. It also made clear that the redeploy units trigger after both armies are deployed, but before the first turn is determined. They also made sure you must set up your units in coherency when coming from Deep Strike, as well as persisting effects not ending when an attached unit is no longer attached, or a unit enters a transport. The characteristics of weapons now have a minimum of 1 applied across the board for any type of modifier, and Imperial Primarchs and Belisarius Call can move through ruins like infantry. They have made it so towering units can shoot through if it is a ruin, and they have clarified the rules on Warlords giving additional battle line units. For example, Lucius allows you to take Noise Marines as battle line, but rules as written, 
you technically couldn't do this. They have confirmed that you can do this even though you declare your warlord after choosing battleline units. I'm sure I've missed some things due to the sheer number of changes. As stated, I would recommend reading the document on Warhammer Community as it also has a load of new FAQs and updates to the rules commentary. With the core rule changes covered, let's look at the changes for the individual factions. The Adeptus Sororitas see mainly points increases for their units which isn't too surprising. They were tipped to be very strong based on their new rules and the points before this update. I personally haven't had a chance to look at some previews of their codex, so I can't say whether these are justified or not. GW did also change a lot of the enhancements for the detachments, but as they didn't have a cost other than in the codex, we haven't covered them here. In any event, it will be interesting to see how the new codex performs once it sees play. The Custodies are on a win rate of 44.6%, so certainly we're in need of a few buffs. They have some significant changes to two of their detachments, and they will certainly like the change to devastating wounds, considering they're safe against mortal wounds. As they no longer carry over, this should make the faction a lot more durable against those attacks. We also see some buffs for the Forge World units, with the Venatari getting a big 17.5% points cut. The Palace Graph Tank and Talamon also get big decreases, with some smaller ones for the other Forge World infantry units. We will have to wait and see how this affects their win rate, but I would imagine it will help them a fair bit, and they are perhaps the biggest beneficiaries from the devastating wound change. The Adeptus Mechanicus get a load of changes, which I'm sure no one will think is unjustified. They have been struggling on a win rate of 45.5% and have been for a very long time. Their army rule has got a significant buff and now applies to all units in the army. The Protector Imperative now gives you plus one ballistic skill, and battle line units within six inches of each other give enemy melee attacks minus one to hit. The Conqueror Imperative gives your unit plus one weapon skill, and they get an additional AP minus one when within six inches of friendly battle line units. Call has been given battle line to activate these buffs, and his movement has been changed to eight. That's not all, with a load of units having their profiles adjusted to make them stronger. To compensate for the increased power of the faction, a lot of the units have seen a points increase. The purpose of this is to reduce the model count of the army, which again would not go amiss, considering it is on average the most expensive army in the game to get to 2,000 points. With such massive changes, it is impossible to tell what the faction's win rate will be once the rules start to see play. Admec players, let us know what you think to the change in the comments. I'd be very interested to see your thoughts. The Eldari are currently on a 48% win rate, and get another host of changes to add to the massive amount they've already received. They get another nerf overall, with a lot of units getting some increases. The very popular Wart Spiders get an 8.7% increase, with the Shadow Spectres getting another 9.5% increase. The Sky Weavers also get a big hit, with the Rain getting a 25% increase. The Aspect Warriors of the Dark Reapers and Fire Dragons get small increases, with Free Phoenix Lords getting a sizable decrease. The Void Beaver and Viper also get a small buff, alongside the Wraith Lord. Overall, I'm not sure the Eldari really needed another nerf, given they were only on a win rate of 48%. Devastating Wounds were also greatly toned down, and a lot of their firepower came from units with that ability. The changes will hopefully add some internal balance to the index, but I can't see it having a huge effect on their win rate, which is more likely to decrease than increase in my opinion. The guards see a few changes which are mostly buffs. They have a win rate of 44.6% by our latest data, so they were in need of some help. GW have changed their detachment rules slightly. Now regiment units get lethal hits on anything other than monsters and vehicles, and squadron units get lethal hits on monsters and vehicles. The Armored Sentinel is looking a lot more competitive, with a 7.1% decrease and has both the Regiment and Squadron keywords. The Guard Indirect Fire gets a points decrease, presumably to account for Indirect Fire now always missing on an unmodified 1-3. to The Kazakin and Rogaldorn Battle Tank also see a slight buff. None of the points decreases are massive, but they certainly don't hurt. The change of the detachment rules so they no longer have to remain stationary should be a big bonus for the faction, as most armies are usually always on the move. I am sure their win rate will increase, but it is difficult to say by how much. The Demons are on a win rate of 48.5% by our data, so some buffs are not completely unwarranted. They have received some significant changes with army rule changes and a whole host of points cuts. For the rules changes, they have essentially made the Shadow of Chaos also apply in a 6 inch aura from all the named and unnamed Greater Demons. This means the Greater Demons will hand out a lot of Battleshock tests, as most of them want to get into melee range. GW have also changed the rules for the detachment, and each Greater Demon. They now all have a 6 inch aura, which places lesser demons of the same Chaos God in the Shadow of Chaos. For example, blood letters within 6 inches of a Bloodthirster will be under the Shadow of Chaos. Furthermore, the attachment now allows you to deep strike within 6 inches of your God's Greater Demon, so you'll be under the Shadow of Chaos if you have the same God keyword. 
I think these changes will certainly help the faction, especially considering the significant points decreases to go with it. It will also make the faction a little less reliant on Bellacor, although he has got a buff. It will be interesting to see how the army fares going forward. I am sure there will be some great players who can take full advantage of the new Deep Strike rules. The Chaos Knights have had some minor changes, firstly to their army rules. Their movement is improved as they can now move over any terrain with a low chance of being battle shot if it is over 4 inches high. They have also got some minor buffs to the Big Knights and a decrease for 1 enhancement. None of the points decreases are very big, but as they run a win rate of 48.9%, they were not super in need of assistance. I would imagine they will remain around the same level or see a slight increase in their win rate after these changes. Chaos Space Marines run a win rate of 47.1% with their new codex and seem relatively well balanced, although they were performing well in terms of winning tournaments. GW have seen fit to nerf them with some rather large increases for some units. The Wall Talons get targeted with a big 22.7% increase and rules changes to boot. They now have to destroy a unit before they can leave the battlefield and re enter Strategic Reserve. The Havocs and Legionaries get the next biggest nerf with a 12.5% increase. We then see a host of smaller nerfs with the Raptors and a Curse Cultist, but the Chaos Tanks get a 10 point increase. As stated, I did think the Chaos Space Marine Codex seemed relatively well balanced, but GW obviously thinks it needed some adjustments. I can only see their win rate decreasing, but it should only be by a relatively small amount. The Death Guard get a few changes, which should help them out overall. The Biologist Putrefire can now use the Grenade Stratagem for free each battle round, however, they have removed the bit which allowed it to be used as a second grenade stratagem. Overall, I would rate this as better, as you basically get a free grenade every battle round. The unit has been given a slight point increase to compensate. Nearly everything else is above, with a 10% decrease for the Blightbringers and Haulers. The Play Surgeon gets the biggest buff with a 23.1% decrease. Death Guard were doing reasonably well on a win rate of 48.6%, I think these changes will keep them around that level, especially considering other armies have also got buffs. The Drukhari run a win rate of 51.2%, which did fluctuate from week to week. They have got some minor changes, with buffs to the Grotesque and Ravager. The Scourges are a lot less tempting than a unit of 5, with an increase to the 5-man, but a big decrease if you take them as a unit of 10. They were very popular as a small 5-man unit, with good anti-tank and quick movement, so I can see the logic. Overall, I don't think this will have a massive impact on their win rate, although I'm sure we will see some bigger squads of Scourges about now. As with the sisters, the GC of the cult see a load of changes for their new codex. We are assuming GW are doing the increases and decreases from the codex points, and as we don't have access to them, we have done ours from the points in the last field manual. Due to this, the GC of the points do not line up with GWs, but it is all a bit redundant as the new codex is about to hit tournaments. We will have to wait and see how it performs for the small but dedicated player base. The Grey Knights have been doing very well recently, which has put them on a win rate of 55.6% and top of the pile by our win rates. GW have given them some nerfs, which isn't unexpected considering how well they are doing. They haven't solely given out nerfs, with an attempt to balance the Land Raider Crusader and Redeemer against each other. Their Brotherhood Librarian's Vortex of Doom ability is confirmed to not target lower operative units unless they're within 12 inches rather than 18. Considering the nerfs are relatively minor, I would expect them to still be one of the top factions, although they will likely drop back a little bit. The Imperial Knights run a winner at 49.7% and get very similar changes to their Chaos counterparts. They get the same change to their movement, with some buffs to the Forge World Knights. They also get a small buff to the Paladin, with some sizable buffs to two of their enhancements. As with the Chaos Knights, considering their current position and the slight buffs, I would imagine they will remain in a similar position going forward. One thing to consider is the fact that a fair few of the new objectives in the prior deck are action based, which is something Knights have traditionally struggled with. We see some rather minor changes to the Necrons, who we have at a win rate of 51.7%. The Canopsec Core will be slightly less popular, with increases to the Doomstalker and Wraiths, which are vital units for this detachment. There has also been a change to the Cosmic Precision Stratagem, which can no longer target monsters. Overall, I think Necrons will drop back a little bit, which isn't unwarranted as they were performing very well, especially in terms of winning tournaments. Perhaps the current strongest faction, due to their large player base, we have the Orcs on a win rate of 53.3%. They have certainly been stomping the meta, with the Green Tide Detachment doing rather well in particular. GW have given some pretty significant nerfs to this one, with the detachment rule now given a 6 plus invul base, which goes to 5 plus when a unit has 10 or more models. Previously, this was a 5 plus invul base, and you could reroll saves of 1 if there were 10 or more models. This is a very significant nerf to the rule, which will have an impact on the Orcs' overall win rate, as this is one of the most popular detachments. On top of this, two strategies have also been toned down. Tide of Muscle now gives you a plus 1 to charge, with rerolls for 10 or more models, 
rather than simply adding the battle round number to the charge roll. The go get em stratagem now allows you to re-roll a move if there are 10 or more models, rather than the guaranteed 6 inch move. On top of this, the Mega Knobs Feel No Pain is increased to a 5 plus, and there have been some points increases. The Mega Knobs take a big 33% increase, with the Pain Boss and Pain Boy getting the smaller but a still large increase. Finally, Snake Rat and the Weird Boy also get a sizable bump. Overall, it will certainly be brought down a lot after these changes. They may also encourage some other detachments to be played, considering it was Green Tide which was being played the most. We will cover Codex Space Marines, followed by the Divergent Chapters. We have the Codex on a win rate of 43.5%, which makes the nerves hit especially hard. Two key enhancements from the Iron Storm Detachment have been nerfed. They are no longer an aura, and can only affect a single unit. They have got some points cuts to compensate for this, but I'm sure players will feel this nerf a fair bit. In addition, the Mercy is Weakness Stratagem now costs 2 CP. It's not all bad news in terms of rules changes, with the Impulsor Transport Capacity being increased to 7, and the Repulsor being increased to 14. We then have a few points changes, which will probably have a limited impact overall. The other types of Gladiators are brought in line with the Lancer, with the same change to Land Raider Crusader and Redeemer happening as the Grey Knights. Likewise, the Storm Raven gets an increase, while the Repulsor gets a small decrease. Overall, I think Codex Space Marines is again paying the price for the Divergent Chapters using their stuff better than what was originally anticipated. We will cover the Dark Angels separately, as they have received some significant changes, while the other Divergent Chapters changes are rather minor. The Space Walls, who have been the best of the chapters on a 54% win rate, have had their two strongest units slightly nerfed. The Thunderwolf Cavalry and Wolfland were doing very well in the Stormlands Task Force, and will most likely still do very well after the adjustment. It should just bring their win rate a little lower. To encourage the Space Wolves to use their own detachment, it is again being changed. Now you can select one of the Sagas, and it is considered completed for the entire battle. This is a very big buff, and it's honestly needed, as they were very hard to score before. We will have to wait and see if this means the detachment is picked over the Stormlands Task Force. The Black Templars have the same changes to the vehicles as the main codex, with the Blood Angels not receiving any changes this time out. The Blood Angels in particular were like this, and soon they're on a win rate of 51.1%, using their detachment and jump pack infantry, which hasn't been changed. Finally, the Death Watch received some small buffs, which is certainly needed considering their win rate of 42.5%. I'm not sure how big an impact the buffs will make, but they will certainly be appreciated. The Dark Angels have received a lot more changes, which isn't too surprising considering they were struggling down at 42%. Players were not using their detachments, instead opting for the Iron Storm Task Force, which they could use fairly well. The Triad Restless GW buffed two of their detachments, as well as buffing some units directly. The Unforgiven Task Force now allows you to give plus one OC to another unit in addition to its original rule. The Inner Circle Task Force also sees a big change. It now allows you to select one objective you control and make it your valid objective. In addition, you can select one or more objectives you do not control to be a valid objective. All Deathwing Infantry get plus one to wound when targeting a unit within range of a valid objective. Considering there is simply no limit to how many objectives you can vow on the offensive, it means your Deathwing will have plus one to wound against all enemies on an objective, which seems quite strong to me. In addition, the Deathwing Knights now have Anti-Monster and Vehicle 4 Plus on the mace with 2 AP. The Power Weapons also see a buff going to 2 damage. The Inner Circle Companions also get a small buff with AP 2 on their weapons. The Deathwing Knights get a small increase for their increased abilities, and the Dark Shroud is highlighted in red, but is the same points as far as I can tell. Overall, I think these changes will certainly help the Dark Angels, with the Inner Circle Task Force looking a lot more tempted in my opinion. We'll have to wait and see what their win rate is, but I am sure players will be trying out the changed attachments at least. The tower on a win rate of 47.2% and I have received some nice buffs to some key units. The raw tires get a decent 80.2% decrease, unless you take 3 of them, which hasn't been reduced by the same amount. I guess that means you will only ever take 2 in a unit maximum. Both generic commanders have seen significant decreases, with all 3 types of crisis suits also getting a big points cut. The hammerhead did get a 15 point increase, but the standard strike team got a small cut. Considering that the key crisis suits and commanders have got big buffs, as well as the broadsides, I would expect this to have a good impact on their win rate. Crisis suits are now far more tempting than before, and hammerheads will no longer be the main choice for anti-tank firepower. The Thousand Suns have been performing quite well with a win rate of 52.3%, but now they have been significantly nerfed. GW have made some major changes to their Cabalistic Rituals, which will definitely take away some of their power. Firstly, a sorcerer can only use one ritual per turn, which makes them a fair bit less flexible, but does make sense thematically. Other than this, the Twist of Fate ritual has been severely nerfed. Previously it turned off armor saves, now it improves the AP of your attacks against a certain unit by 2. This is still a strong rule, but is nowhere near as effective as it was before, 
and good impulse saves will negate the increased AP. Next, Doom Bolt has been reworded so it cannot target lone operatives unless within 12 inches, which is fair enough. Finally, Temporal Surge is restricted to once per unit per phase, which again is fair enough, although not as powerful. The main one which will be missed is Twist of Fate, which is still the same very high cost of 9 Cabal points. It was the main reason Iron was taken so it could be used for free once per game, and is still very good against certain armies. In addition, the rule of sorcerers on disc has been changed to take 2 inches from the move and charge rolls of a unit from the half movement it used to do. To compensate, there has been a very slight points decrease for the terminators and the sorcerer on disc, as well as a decrease for the vortex beast. Overall, the Thousand Sons will definitely feel these nerfs at some of their strongest combos. As they were used in nearly all competitive lists, I'm sure we'll see their win rate drop. Having said that, they're still a strong faction, with Magnus and other units being able to deal a whole load of damage. Another faction which has been given a load of changes is the Tyranids. They have been struggling on a win rate of 45%, so it is not too surprising. First of all, creatures in Cyanatch range now get plus 1 strength in melee as well as a 3d6 test for leadership, which is a very nice buff. The Shadow and the Warp ability has also been buffed, meaning enemy units within 6 inch of a Cyanax bug will take the Battleshock test at minus 1. Crusher Stampede has been buffed, with Tyranid monsters now getting plus 2 OC when they start in strength. The Ultra Melded Stratagem now allows the unit to operate in the same way as the Super Heavy Knights do, moving through ready terrain at a low chance of being Battleshocked if it's over 4 inches. That's not all, with buffs to specific units as well. The Hive Tyrant now also gives lethal hits with its aura, which is a very nice boof which applies to any Tyranid within 6 inches. The Neuroelector is now Synapse, and has got a slight points increase to go along with it. The Neuro Tyrant can lead Zoanthropes, which I'm sure is a very welcome addition. The Broodlord and Parasite of Moltrex have been given the Shadow of the Warp keyword, meaning it can be used if either of these are on the battlefield. They have also been given Synapse. Morlocks, Ravagers and Trigons have been given Vanguard Invader, allowing them to work with that detachment. If that wasn't enough, the X-Queen's Bioplasmic Cannon has been increased to Strength 9. Finally, the Rupture Cannon on the Tyran effect has had its damage changed to D6 plus 6, which is a huge improvement on the 2D6 it was before. There has then been a number of mainly buffs, with the Bioball getting a very big 33% decrease. We see equally large cuts for the Spores, with an odd change to the Ripper Swarms, which makes them cheaper the more you take. Overall, the Tyrion should see a considerable rise in their win rate, with a lot of the buffed units remaining the same points. I'm sure Tyranid collectors will be excited to bring out the big bugs to try out the improved Crusher Stampede. We have the World Eaters on a win rate of 48.2%, and they've received a few buffs to some key units. The 8 Bound and Exalted 8 Bound are the backbone to nearly all World Eaters lists, so a points decrease for them should improve their win rate. However, it is only a very small decrease, so I wouldn't expect their win rate to change by a huge amount. We have covered a huge number of changes, with nearly every faction getting some adjustments. We did mention the Blood Angels were unchanged, and the Agents of the Imperium were not adjusted this time out. Of the main factions, the Lees of Town were the only ones to get no changes whatsoever, which is a little surprising, as they run away at 47.9%, and all the factions around them got changes. I suppose they did get a points cost for the Hernkin Jaegers, but that doesn't really count in my opinion. We will have to wait and see how they are affected going forward, but I'd imagine they will drop down a bit as others around them are now a bit stronger. Stay tuned for our weekly stat shows, where we will cover the win rates for all factions. I am very excited to see how the new meta unfolds when we get the first win rates for the new balance update and mission deck in the coming weeks. If you enjoyed our content, please subscribe, check out one of the videos on screen, and consider using our affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching.